This is a Woodside Church Sunday. Good morning, all. Um, so, I have been learning how to do cryptic crosswords recently. I know that's not what you thought you were going to get from the stage this morning, but here we are. Um, I'm heading towards 40, and I thought it was time to learn cryptic crosswords. Um, And they seem like something that seems really intimidating and scary and difficult, but I have been promised by those who do them often, my mother-in-law included, that actually once you get used to the rhythm of them and understanding them, they come to you. So we're going to start this morning by doing one together, but before we put it up, Matty, um, (laughs) I've warned him, he's a key part of not giving the game away here. Um, I want us to do this in one mind and purpose. I need a promise from all of you, no one is going to shout the answer out. Okay, don't get too eager, too excited. You've got to hold it in until I tell you that we're ready to do it, okay? So we're going to have the question come up in a second. Hold back. Go for it, Matty. So this is our clue. Praise crew or shipmate partially. So let's work through it together. You ready, guys? I can feel the excitement in the room. Um, It's a seven-letter word we're looking for. And our cryptic crossword is broken into three parts. You have a normal crossword clue that kind of gives you a hint at what the word would be. Then you have your kind of cryptic clue, and then you have what is known as your indicator. That is the part that tells you how you're going to figure out the clue. And your normal clue is always at the beginning or the end. So if we move on to our next slide, hold back, guys. No one shout it out. Our normal clue is highlighted in yellow. It's praise. Our indicator is highlighted in green for you partially. Partially tells us that it's a hidden clue, which means it is within the words that came before. Okay, no one shout it out. If you are in this room... (laughs) Okay, well, Martin can't shout it out. (laughs) We are looking for a word that means praise, Martin, and it's hidden within the words, crew or shipmate, yeah? yeah? Great. If you have never done a cryptic crossword before and you think you know the answer, can you put your hand up for me? Oh, yes. I'm so glad. Go on, what do you think? Go for it. Yeah. It is worship. Next one. Congratulations, gang. We did a cryptic crossword. Well done. See? Once you get used to it, once you know the tricks, not so hard. (laughs) Thank you. So today, we aren't just going to do cryptic crosswords, although we could. Um, This morning, our talk is titled Spiritual Living. And I think that is a thing that can look really difficult and daunting from the outside. How am I going to live in a spiritual life. But actually, a lot of it is not dissimilar to our cryptic crossword in knowing the mind of the setter. So a setter is the name for people who set crosswords. I've learned this as well. Um, The person who built our lives, who built our world, our God, aligning our mind with his mind, aligning our heart with his heart, that is the key to unlocking spiritual life. So before we go on, I want to remind us of what we heard last week. If you weren't here last week, please, can I encourage you to go back and listen. Tim Green did an amazing, an amazing service to us and really gifted us with a talk about how we are now free from condemnation. Those of us who are in Christ, that is you and I, Christians, we are free from condemnation. Our sin has been condemned, but we have not. And this morning, we're going to read the next part of the the truth that comes from that revelation. And what Paul does is, in this section, he describes two types of people. He describes those who are unbelievers, those who are ruled by the sinful nature, and then he describes those who are believers, who are ruled by the spirit within them. You and I, if we are in Christ, if we are Christians, not me, you guys, um, (laughs) if we are in Christ, then we are those ruled by our spirit within us, by the spirit of Christ within us. Okay? To hold that in mind as we read these verses. You are free from condemnation. You are those who are ruled by the Spirit. Right, Romans 8, verses 5 to 13. If you've got a Bible on you, feel free to read along. It will be on the screen behind me as well. Okay, let's go take a quick sip. Okay. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. 
For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you, you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. You have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if, through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Amen? I mean, I could sit down, couldn't I? I did say to someone yesterday, like, it's hard to to do Romans in some respects because there's no one greater than Paul at explaining our salvation. (laughs) He's kind of done it. It's, It's incredible, but... I want to just unpack some of that with you guys today. Paul is encouraging the reader. He has said, you are free from condemnation. And now he's saying, you who are in Christ, you are also free from the curse of sin and death. We're going to take a two-pronged approach this morning. First, we're going to look at the encouragement. And then we're going to look at the exhortation to live our lives differently as a result. Well, you could call this, as I have done, what God has done for you and what you can do for you. So first, we're going to start with the encouragement, what God has done for you, because this is good news to each of us. If I can just jump straight ahead to our three encouragements. Thank you. So God has redeemed you. God is continuing the work of redemption in you, and you have access to life and peace. And we heard this this morning already. Praise God. I love it when he does this. You have access today to life and peace. So firstly, God has redeemed you. The Greek word that's used in the verses we just read, um, in the NLT version, which I read to you, uh, sinful nature, it's a word, I'm going to try and pronounce it, sarx, getting a nod from David, so I've done okay. Um, Sometimes that can be translated, you might say in your Bibles, as fleshly nature, because it literally does mean the physical soft tissue of a creature, but the way that Paul is using it, the context it's given, means that actually our sinful nature is a better translation, because this isn't about our bodies being sinful in and of themselves. God created us, and he created us perfectly. Our bodies are not the problem. Our sinful nature is the problem. And what I am terming this, because I'm trying to do one better than Paul, is our Adamness. So earlier in Romans, and I'll read the verse to you in a minute, but Paul describes how in the Garden of Eden, God created this perfect world, and he placed Adam and Eve in it, and we know this. And he said to them, have dominion, be part of my ruling kingdom, be with me. And just don't eat that one tree, because it will poison you. And Adam and Eve went, okay, and they ate the one tree. And they brought this poison into their bloodline, and we are in their bloodline. So each of us were born into the poison that is the curse of sin and death. But because Jesus came and took on him on our sin. He came in fleshly body and went to the cross and dealt with our condemnation, dealt with our sin there. We now walk in the freedom of the Spirit. So it's the Adamness, that curse, that sin that remains within us that is our problem. But those of us in Jesus are not ruled by it. That is what we've heard this morning. We are ruled by the Spirit. So in Romans 5, 17, Paul puts it like this. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. You can live in triumph over sin and death. It's an incredible encouragement. So you have been redeemed and you will be raised to life after death. But when in Romans 8, Paul is talking about um, life and freedom from death, he isn't just talking about after the grave. God isn't waiting for us to die to redeem us. He has redeemed us now. He has already begun a work of redemption within us. Paul says you are now in Christ, and the Spirit of Christ is now in you. Jesus told his disciples, I need to go so that the Spirit can come. Jesus, having completed our salvation work, left 
so the Spirit could come and the Spirit could begin within us the work of ongoing sanctification. Hebrews 10, 30, uh, 14 to 18. If I can have that one up. Yeah. It says, For by that one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that lives and dwells within each of us, also testifies that this is so. For he says... This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds, and when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. You have been freed from condemnation, and you have been freed from the curse of sin and death, and Christ has begun in you a work of sanctification and redemption today. We don't need to wait for a hope. We have a hope past the grave, but that's not what we're waiting for. That hope of what comes past the grave fuels us today to live for God. Our bodies are failing. We live in a fallen, broken world. I um, have an autoimmune disease. That means that I can't sometimes swallow the thing that you were born knowing how to do. You're not born knowing how to do many things, but you're born knowing how to swallow. My body has started forgetting how to do sometimes. <laughs> We have fallen vessels, and sometimes, by the grace of God, we see glimpses of the redemption that will come for our bodies. We see healing in this time. But ultimately, all our bodies will fail and pass. But whilst we live in a fallen world and in fallen bodies, God has already begun that redemption work within us. We are not to live as those who are already dead, because we are free from the curse of sin and death. The Bible tells us that to live is Christ, to die is gain. We have a hope past the grave that gives us life and peace today. So, you have access to life and peace now. If we pop our three encouragements back up, Mike, that'd be great. Thank you. Honestly, if you don't listen to a word I say and just dwell on those, I'm fine with it. Um, so, you have life and peace today, and it is not because of your circumstance. We heard that again this morning, praise God. Being a Christian does not entitle you to health, to wealth. It doesn't entitle you to an easy life. Being a Christian, being ruled by the Spirit, means that in the midst of the storm, we are able to find life and peace. And we have to fight for it sometimes. We have to fight against the fleshly nature, the sinful nature. We have to fight to find that peace. But what we know is we can find it. We know that the battle has been won by Christ and we have access to life and peace today. So those are our encouragements. Paul wants us, the readers of his letter, to be sure of our salvation. We have been purchased by Christ and are no longer subject to our sinful nature. So now you know that, what do you do with it? And that's when we move on. But if you remember our cryptic crossword... And I'm not going to lie, guys, this is a real stretched metaphor I'm using this morning. <laughs> you have a standard clue, a cryptic clue, and your indicator. And the indicator tells you what type of puzzle you are dealing with. It directs you in how to interpret the clues so that you can find the answer. And I'm going to say that the spirit in us works as our indicator key for life. It helps us to understand and determine what the good and perfect, pleasing will of God is. If we listen to that spirit within us, it directs us towards God. We have fallen into habits of the sinful nature that we need to break, and we need to tune ourselves back into the spirit, and the spirit will enable us to make the choices that will please God. And that is, the joy of this is the spirit is doing the work. We partner with God as the spirit gives us the strength and the equipping. This is not in our own might. The spirit enables us to please God. Paul tells us that through the power of the Spirit, we can put to death the deeds of our sinful nature. So we're going to go to our exhortation, what you can do for you. Please note, it's not titled what you can do for God. Because like Paul, I really want to be clear, you cannot earn your salvation. Okay, a work has been done and completed in Christ. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more. You are completely loved, completely saved, completely free from condemnation, and completely alive in Christ alone. 
We are encouraged by Paul both here and in other letters in Ephesians to determine, though, what pleases the Lord. And Ephesians 5, verses 8 to 10 says, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of the light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. What you can do for you is to live your best life. And the one who designed you, the setter of your life, knows best how to do that. The spirit within us will guide us to do that which is pleasing to our Father in heaven and what brings life and peace to us. And I have four stepping stones that will help us in doing this. It's just four things I think I felt I wanted to share with you today. So, turn away from evil, put it to death. Break sinful patterns. Serve others with love and humility and grow in contentment. And I'm not going to read all of these verses out to you today, but feel free to take a note. These things will help you to live under the rule of the Spirit in tune with your Lord. Turn away from evil, put it to death. Let your mind be transformed. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Throw off anything that hinders. We want to chase after the good things of God in this world. Okay, take time, sit with God, say, Lord, show me what in my heart, what in my life is not of you. What is hindering me in my chase for you, God? What, Lord, have I kept hold of from my sinful nature that I need to cast off and put to death through the power of your spirit? One of the ways we can do this is by breaking sinful patterns. There are things you did in your life because you were ruled by the sinful nature, but you no longer have to be subject to that sinful nature. Breaking a habit is like building a habit. There are steps you can make. You can make yourself accountable. If you don't want to gossip anymore, go and find a friend and say, ask me each week how I'm doing with this. If you catch me in conversation saying things I shouldn't, pull me up on it. I give you that freedom of my friend. Hold me accountable. One of the things I read recently in forming good habits is to link it to something you already do. And I've started trying to do this myself. If you want to read the Bible more and you want to be on your phone less, you know what you can do? Every night when you go to bed where you would have picked up your phone, put it onto charge on the other side of the room, grab your Bible and say, 10 minutes, I'm going to read my Bible for 10 minutes instead. Break that habit while building a healthy new one for you. And can I say, our uncle brought such good wisdom this morning. You want to spend less time on your phone and more time in your Bible, get a hard copy Bible. Do not do it on your phone. (laughs) Let's put temptation away. Like, what do we think we're doing? Throw it off. Let's pick up the Bible. If you want to be in prayer more, get up every morning. You have that coffee. Say, do you know what, five minutes, I'm going to sit with that coffee for five minutes. That is an achievable goal. I'm going to start a pattern of prayer in my life, and I'm going to break the patterns that are ungodly and sinful in nature. Throw temptation away with the sin. And then serve others and love humility. The sinful nature is self-serving. The nature of the spirit is like Christ. It is a servant-hearted nature. Love one another really, really well. Let us be known as people who will love one another and work together with one mind and purpose. And grow in contentment. The sinful nature is greedy. The spiritual life stands in God's amazing grace and full of gratitude for what he has done. We came into the world with nothing, Paul says, and we will leave with nothing. So be content that you have a God who provides your daily bread for you. What a good, good God we have. He gives generously to us. Do not fall into the sinful nature of desire and greed, but instead sit in gratitude. Build habits of gratitude. At the end of your day, sit down and think through everything that happened in your day and say, thank you, God. I want to thank you for that coffee this morning. That was good to taste. I want to thank you for that text from a friend that lifted my spirit and encouraged me. I want to thank you, God, for the nature I saw this evening that spoke of your beauty and truth. Let's make lists. Let's just work through our day and thank God because he is good in every step of our day. Start building a life that speaks of contentment and gratitude. 
Thank God for his gifts because the one thing that will always align your mind and your life to God is worship. The answer to our crossword, that is the one thing that I can guarantee you, if you spend time praising God, your heart and your mind will be transformed. The more we fix our eyes on God, the more our heart, our mind align to the things of God, the more we allow him to transform us into his children, the people that he created us to be. And you want to know how you can decipher if you are under the control of the Spirit rather than sinful nature. And I assure you, if you know Christ, you are under the Spirit. But the sign of it in our life, the answer to the cryptic crossword that is spiritual living, what clue to look for, it is not a perfect life. We will sin. That is a fact. We are in a fallen world, and we are living with the consequences of that within ourselves, within our world, within our heart. We are not ruled by sin. That is the difference for us. But it will happen. We're not looking for perfect lives. No one can do that but the one that did, and that was Jesus. Whilst we are free of condemnation and the law of sin and death, we are not free from its impact. But what we are is not ruled by it. And I know this because I see the fruits of the Spirit in your lives. I hope you see it in mine. That is what speaks to the truth of our freedom. Galatians 5, 23 says this. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. These are the outworkings of a life that has been aligned to God, a life that has given over to the Spirit and said, Control me, Father. Let your will be done in my life. Align and renew my heart with yours. I lay aside the sinful nature. I put to death the work of sin. And I say, thank you, Christ, that you saved me and have begun a work of redemption within me today. And we work out that in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I want to pray for us now. I want to pray first for anyone in this room who isn't yet given their life over to Christ, who hasn't yet said to Christ, will you be the king in my heart? Will you be the one who takes control of me? Because you are ruled. When you are born into this world, you are ruled by something, and you get to choose. Am I going to continue to be ruled by the sinful nature, or am I going to choose to be ruled by the one who loved me and made me and saved me? I just want to pray for you if you have not yet made that commitment, and then I'm going to go on to pray for the rest of us. So if you where you are, just want to close your eyes, and we'll do that now. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in this room who have not yet given over their hearts to you, Lord. I pray today that they would feel able to do that now, that they would say, thank you, God. I know that I have sinned. I know that in my own strength I could never make it right. And I believe that you sent your son to do that for me. I believe that your son came to earth as man and died on a cross, taking on the sin and shame of this world, and then was raised three days later. And I believe that I have found resurrection through him. I believe that I stand in his blood, perfect in your sight because of your son. And I say, come and rule in my heart today, God. Come and rule in me. If you have prayed that for the first time today, please let it be known to someone this morning. And for the rest of us, Father God, I ask you that you would come to my brothers and sisters and to me, Lord. Would you examine our hearts and lives, Lord? Would you know the places we struggle to break the habits of our sinful nature? We thank you, Lord, that through you there is no condemnation on us in this. That through you we have complete freedom and peace and life. We ask that you would help us to step more fully into that every day. Each day we would work to step more and more into your will, more and more into the redemption of our being, Lord. Thank you that you have perfected us through your Son, that we stand clean and holy before you. And Lord, we ask, make us more like you today. Continue that work. Help us to break free. Pray, Father, would you come today for those of us who are struggling in sin, that have continual sin that is is pulling our hearts down. I pray for us, would you break those chains? I thank you, Lord God, that does break chains. And I pray you would do that now. That we would lift our hearts and our heads to you. We would see the face of our Father shining down. And we would know the joy of you over our lives, Lord. 
We would know the freedom of a life that is given over to the Spirit's will. And I pray we would hear your voice clearly, speaking to us, prompting us, guiding us. And each day we walk, Lord. Amen. So that is it. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you've been blessed by what you've heard here today. If you're new to Woodside and you want to find out more about who we are, what we do, what we believe, then please feel free to check out the link that is on the screen now. And if you would like to get in contact with us, then please also feel free to email the address that's on screen and one of our team will get back to you. We'd love to have you join us in person one week. We meet at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning and you can join us either over in Great Denham or at our building on Dover Crescent in Putnam. So that is it. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit woodsidechurch.com or follow us on social media.